So sorry for giving you false hope. We're not quite done with Excel yet. I almost forgot. We now need to remove the columns that we didn't use. Okay, so in Excel, remove all the unnecessary columns which you didn't use. Um, and then after you've remo removed each column, please go and confirm that your functions still work. So if I delete something, please go check that all your functions still work and your graphs still work and that there's nothing that actually broke in the process. So have a look through everything. Don't leave any stone unturned and take out all the columns that you didn't need. Right, so now you should be sitting with a significantly smaller table and I hope you took note of the columns that you actually removed because we'll probably be using most of those columns in Access. So save your spreadsheet now, close it and open the spreadsheet that we're going to use for the database. So this should be a plain spreadsheet with absolutely no formatting and no fancy headings, nothing removed the original one that we downloaded and fixed just from the um, in terms of making the data neat. OK, so now we need to remove the fields that we're not going to use in Access. So what you need to consider here is we need to remember what we're going to do in Access with this data. Um, we are going to put a validation rule and validation text on we're going to make a list or a combo box and please that can't be something that where people could choose multiple options that has to be something where they could choose only two or three or four options but just one out of them we need to put in an input mask um, if you've got a good idea you can put it on whatever you want to but the only thing i can ever think of is a date um, and then we need to put uh, we're going to have to do three queries all right and the queries will have to have um, complexity. So we're going to have one with simple criteria. We're going to have one with combined criteria um, with operators such as or, between, um, maybe with a wild card. So that's a good place to include a question where they could use multiple options. Or um, for, for the third one, we're going to have to have a calculated field. So here, um, anything with operators or a date and time function. So you will have to put a numerical field over here. Um, I don't really know if a scale question will do it. If you don't have any numerical fields, you can leave your scale question or even leave your timestamp if you're really, really desperate. And then we're going to use a complex calculated field where you use grouping. Okay. Or you could use logical functions or text functions. So considering that, please remove the columns that you're not going to need and you need to change the headings as well because the headings need to be not longer than 64 characters. So you can use the len function to check how long they are. They um, can include a combination of letters and spaces and whatever, but they can't have a full stop. They can't have an exclamation point or this funny sign or square brackets and very important they can't begin with leading spaces so there can't be a space at the start of a name and also no double quotation marks so if you have any of those things in your headings then it won't be able to import successfully so please go and fix that shorten the headings remove the fields that you're not going to need and then we can import the data if you did your project in Afrikaans you will need to change the yes and no questions to from ja and near to yes and no. Be very careful not to just do it on the whole spreadsheet. So just select the columns that has the yes and no answers and then do a replace where you can say replace ja mit yes and the same for no. You may keep some of the same fields but it should be I would say at least more than 60% or so different than the ones you have in Excel. So now we can save this and we're ready to import in Access. You need to create a new database in the Phase 2 database folder and name it something meaningful regarding your topic and the fact that we're analyzing this. So we're going to in the fact that we data analyze. 
you can open it up, enable the content, and then we're going to not create a table, we're actually going to use the external data tab and import the data from Excel. So from file Excel, we're going to import it into a new table, go and find the Excel sheet in the database folder. This is the one we fixed up. That's just general short headings. Next. Okay. The first row contains column headings. Very important. They do contain the column headings. Next. The field types. Um, if you want, you can actually take the time now to uh, specify the data types. Um, and things like this one, especially where it needs to be currency, you can go and do that now already if you want. Um, and if there are any fields that you want to skip, you can do that as well. So just have a look through this. Don't worry if there's one that shows like this. You'll see it actually comes right as soon as you get past it. It should be fine. Or if you click on it, then it should look all right. You can say next. Um, it's up to you if you want to do a primary key. It usually doesn't want to allow you to use this the timestamp. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I usually just say no primary key. In this instance, we're not going to use a primary key because we're not um, confirming that each record is unique. Next, um, the table name, we can probably also just call it form responses. And we're going to say finish. If you get an error over there, then it means one of your headings did not adhere to the naming rules. We don't need to save these import steps since we won't be repeating the import steps over and over. So we can close. Now we have our table. If you get a second table that says import errors, then you need to go and look at which field and which rows gave the import errors. And then you can manually fix the records in the table and delete the error table. We've now got our table with suitable data. It's not a direct import from the spreadsheet. We have at least five fields and all fields contain single data units. If you did it correctly, according to the questionnaire video, you should have this mark.